Yes. But how providential is it that uh, we have such a splash uh, on the front page of uh, the Daily Nation now pro over plan to impeach Ruto, and then we have his statement, yes, there is a system within government that is trying to frustrate him. As well. Even you as a human being, you will be inclined to think truly there's something really happening. People are now talking about impeachment. Uh, and people, uh, uh, we've seen from all, all these other areas that he's saying, you know, they're frustrating even the MPs that are allied to me, uh, as it were. Oh. Frustrating, oh, come on, frustrating MPs, how? You know, <laughs> what should worry if I were Ruto? What should worry Ruto? This is what we have uh, in the standard. Deputy President yeah. William Ruto now claims that the national government officials are intimidating. Actually, that's uh, the, the word. Intimidating the leaders the allied to him. Uh, how? I mean, to me, politically, what should uh, worry me if I was William Ruto? He's the kind of swag I saw at Kasarani Stadium, you know? Between Uru, Mugai, Raira, Musalia, there, Oparanya, you can see that you're not moving with the, 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 the mood of the country. That is what should worry me. These are the things of saying your MPs are like you are being fought. You are fighting shadows. I think, as I said earlier, Ruto is his own enemy. He, he doesn't want to move with the country, he wants to, to fight the, the mood that is prevailing in the country. Everybody says, the, the, the times we live in, everything is BBI. This reggae say you want to stop. That is the mood that is resonating with the people of Kenya. These are the things of wanting to say that there are people fighting MPs. Dibal, under the current constitution, members of parliament have been uh, given the constitutional freedom to undertake their duties. Those who uh, have CDF, they are running their CDF ensuring that they bring development to the people. You have freedom to go to public rallies, to speak to your people. So who is this being frustrated? Have you seen any member of parliament who has come out and saying that the provincial administration is fighting me? I don't think so. I think, uh, Dibali, if you ask me, let uh, DP make a choice and say, come out to the open and say, I'm going to oppose this thing called BBI. Mm -hmm. When the referendum comes, I will be on the side of no. I've disagreed with the president. I don't like his agenda of saying he's fighting corruption. I, I don't agree with his agenda of saying we should look at this constitution. That way you are able to make the people of Kenya understand who you are. Instead of, uh, you know, fighting shadows. DCI, I don't know if you talk to the people of Kenya, they will tell you that they appreciate that the DCI has been very professional. He has come out to fight corruption. When you talk about somebody who has uh, an other scandal involving poor people of Aror and Kimore, where money was given out to bring people to, you know, to a people of a, a very dry region. And the DCI is coming out to arrest these people to save public money that is being lost. Is that an office that you really need to, to attack? If I was sitting in his, in his shoes, I'll say I'm fully behind the DCI in his war against corruption. I'm happy that DCI has gone after the thieves that were denying my people water. I will not come out and say I want to fight the DCI. In this matter of Kene, I'm telling you, it's, you could see the pain of the father. You know, the father said, if you come here and shed crocodile tears, if, if you saw the caption, that is a father of somebody saying that statement. If I were Ruto, I would be saying, we are happy that the DCI has uh, really, I mean, has commenced thorough investigations, and I hope that the father, who has cried today for the loss of his son, yeah. will find justice. That's what we expect from the DP. But if you come out and uh, you know you want to shadow box every office, uh, offices that are supposed to serve public good, ensure that there is justice to the poor, the downtrodden, you are creating uh, your own enemies unnecessarily. So for William Ruto, let him settle down come out and tell us that uh, he's now the one who is uh, the leader of opposition in this country. Look at the statements we on the floor of the house. When the president says Nairobi is supposed to be collecting 11 billions in revenue, they are collecting 4 billion. I want to bring in KRA to assist Nairobi in collecting revenue. The leader of majority, who is a close ally of the president called Kipchumba Murkome, comes and reads a four-page statement, rubbishing the president. <laughs> now, what do you expect <laughs> the president to do when every agenda that he wants to push forward for the benefit of the people who elected him is being opposed by his principal assistant. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look very tidy. Dibal. Right. Well, Dibal, I think uh, but, but this is where I think um, 
uh, Herman Manyora should realize that uh, Orengo, James Orengo, is the leader of opposition. And he has every right to introduce matters like that. I mean, that's his duty, really. Um, it is up to us, our side of the government, to defend uh, uh, the other side. Your side. So, our side. So, so I, I just think that I think, I think, I think uh, what, what uh, James Orengo is doing is basically preparing his side uh, for, for, for what is truly a parliamentary system. Uh, our Articles 147, I think up to 150 of the Constitution, deal with the matters of the presidency of the executive. And uh, one of the ways to remove somebody or to even <laughs> show that we are not pleased with what you're doing is through the impeachment process. Um, I just want to repeat what I said, uh, that the people around the deputy president are the people who are going to be uh, his own undoing. They, 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 are, they are young, they are very hot-blooded, they, um, I think, I guess they have personal interests rather than national interests. They don't really give good advice. Um, <coughs> they are emotional. They carry emotions to every function. And, 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 and therefore, I think um, some of these things are, as I say, brought upon themselves. Somebody suggested, that, I think it was again Herman Manyora, suggested, or is it, uh, that, that I think the best thing for leaders, older people, more, more, more uh, respected people, to, to give advice on this matter. Uh, as, as my colleague uh, has said, um, uh, senior counsel here has said, you know, where we are going, you know, <laughs> where we are going is in the BBI. That's where we are going. And, and, and if, you're, if, if that's where we are going and the majority is forming to go there, sometimes, by the way, if you are going a different way, it's difficult to hear you. It's difficult to listen to you. I mean, you're going alone. So some of the things that you need to do is, please, uh, consider going where we are going. Consider going where the nation is going. Um, and, and I think that's what I can advise. It is one of the options that the Deputy President has, is to consider going where the nation is going, rather than going his own way. Right.